Hi, I'm Craig Taylor, Implementation Manager at Smith Cooper System Partners. On the 8th of July, the Chancellor announced changes to UK VAT, changing the standard rate from 20% to 5% for hospitality and holiday accommodation industries, as well as for admissions to some attractions. The changes came into force on Wednesday, 15th of July, and they'll run through till the 12th of January, 2021. Now, in this video, I am going to look at the areas of Sage 200 that you will need to review if the changes impact your business. So let's get on with it. OK, so the first area in Sage 200 you should review are your VAT codes. So you need to go to Accounting System Manager, into Settings, and then into the option called VAT Rates. In here, you need to identify if you have a lower rate VAT code already. Maybe you use it for fuel or something like that. If you do, then this could be used. However, we recommend that you create a new code specifically for the, the current VAT change uh, purposes. So to do that, you can either click underneath the, the listed codes or click the Add button. And the first thing you need to do is enter a code for your new VAT rate. Now, this code in can be anything you want. Um, obviously, it just needs to be unique to the codes already there. So I'm just going to use 99. You then need to give it a name and just go across. So the tick box here for VAT return needs to be enabled. This will ensure that the VAT code is recorded against the VAT return when, when it's used. The terms, EC terms, EU terms will be not applicable. And then you need to enter your percentage, which is going to be five. Then just check your input and output nominal codes. The VAT for this VAT code will then be analyzed too. Once you're happy with that, you can click OK. The next areas to check will depend largely on how you use SAYS 200. So these are basically checking where the default VAT codes come from when you enter a transaction. So if you use stock items, your VAT codes will most likely default from each stock item record. If you do not use stock items, or perhaps you, you, you might use stock items, but you also enter transactions which don't use the stock items, then the default VAT code will come from your customer and supplier records. So firstly, let's look at how to change the default against a customer and supplier record. So if we go to the sales ledger, I'll just select my customer list so we can see the list of customers. And then we'll go into sales accounts and amend account details. So firstly, you can select your customer and select the trading tab. And on here, we can see the default VAT code for this customer. So simply, I can choose the drop down and I could select a different VAT code and click save. I can do exactly the same for my suppliers in the same way. If I go to the purchase ledger, purchase accounts, amend account details, select our supplier, select the trading tab, and we've got the VAT codes listed here. So I can choose my temporary VAT rate, click save. Now, that's all well and good, but obviously it does depend on how many records you've got to change for each ledger. So if I go back to the sales ledger, what you can also do if you use Sage 200 professional spring 2019 or above, then you can use the import routines to update existing accounts. What you'd need to do is go to the sales ledger, utilities, import and export. And first of all, you need to export your accounts. Now, obviously you can export all accounts. You can also filter based on an analysis code, or you can use um, a single customer account um, if you wanted to do it one at a time. Uh, I am gonna just use a single account for this purpose, just for speed. So if we'll click OK, it's gonna ask us to give it a file name and choose a location to save the file. So I'm just gonna overwrite this one I did earlier. So for me, I've only exported the one customer. Just minimize Sage and I've got my file on the desktop. Just double click this. Now the, the thing just to point out here is that it is gonna open this file in a comma separated value important to point out that if there are any fields which are i suppose new, new, largely numerical 
um, which have leading zeros, then those leading zeros will likely be stripped out due to the format of the file. So you just need to watch that when you're doing this, this type of process. Now, for this particular purpose of updating the tax code, what I'd suggest is you actually remove any fields which you're not intending to update. So just delete the fields like so. There are mandatory fields when you're doing an import. In this case, for the customers, and it's the same for the supplier side, the account number is the only mandatory field that we've got. In this case, I'm just going to change the VAT code to my new temporary VAT rate. And obviously, if you had multiple customers exported, you could go down and change the VAT code for each one. And you can also take out the customers that you don't want to update. It doesn't matter if you keep them in the file. For sort of tidiness, you may want to just take them out so it's clear which ones you intend to update. OK, so if we click Save on the file, so I'm going to update Abby to my 99 tax code. So if I go back into Sales 200, back into our Sales Ledger Utilities Import and Export area, and this time we'll go into the Import Accounts. So if you've done importing of data before, you'll be familiar that there's a validation routine uh, or a validate and import. Personally, I'd always recommend you do a validate option first. That'll give you a clear indication if there's any issues. Uh, you can correct the file before then committing to the validate and, and import. Obviously, if you do a validate and import, it is going to highlight any issues as well, but it will import uh, the ones that are OK. So for this example, I am just going to do validate and import and I'm going to click here. So this is the key part to the, the process that we're doing here is that we want to update an account if it already exists, because we know that it is going to. We don't need to worry about the values down the bottom here for the purpose of updating the tax code like, like we're doing. We'll click OK. We'll search for our file, which is there. Click Open. And the system will go through and it will give you a message to say whether or not it's successful. And it will also give you a validation report. If there were errors with the import or the validation, it will give you two reports. One's reporting... Uh, those records that are OK and were successful and a report which will tell you if there's any issues. Obviously, if you've got the spooler enabled, it will go into the spooler. So it's updated Abby. Let's just go in and double check it. So we'll go in, we'll select Abby from the list view this time. We'll go into amend account from the list view icon. And on the trading tab now, it's changed my VAT code to my new 99 temporary VAT rate. Now that process is exactly the same in the purchase ledger. So you, in utilities, you have import and export. And again, you've got the export option, export it to CSV, make the change and then import. But remember to tick the, the box to update accounts if it exists already. So for transactions where the VAT code defaults from a stock item record, you want to review the default tax code against your stock items. So we'll go into the stock control and I'll select the stock list. So obviously I can choose an item off the list and then go into amend details. But for this purpose, we're going to go into stock records and then select amend stock item details from the menu. So what you'll need to do is select your item. And on the first tab, the details tab, you'll see here the, the standard rate is selected as my default uh, VAT code. And I can simply from the drop down, scroll down and find my temporary VAT code and change it on here and click save. Similarly to the suppliers and the customers, there is an option to export and then import your stock records. So again, if you've got lots of changes to make, it may be that you find it easier to go to utilities, go to import and export, export your stock records out first of all. Okay, so again, with this one, we can do it via product group if we want to filter by, by product group, or we can do all stock items. Similarly to the customers, it will create a CSV file. Again, just watch 
out for any leading zeros. If your stock codes, for example, are coded with leading zeros, you need to check them before uh, importing the file. You then go back to import stock records. And again, we've got the update stock record if it exists option. OK, so it is important just to review your default tax codes against your customers and suppliers and your stock items. Your customers and suppliers uh, will default for transactions such as your sales ledger invoices and credit notes or your purchase ledger invoices and credit notes, but it will also be used for order processing with free text lines. Obviously, the stock item lines on your sales and purchase orders are what will use the stock item default tax code. Okay, so as well as default tax code settings, you should also review any outstanding transactions you have where VAT is applicable but has not yet been posted or updated. So you may need to amend them if the tax point is on or after the 15th of July 2020. And to understand the possible scenarios which affect you, you should really find out the applicable tax point and time of supply, which is relevant to your transactions. This is something you can find from the gov.co.uk website. First of all, we will consider the effects on outstanding sales and purchase orders. Now, effectively, any order lines which have not been invoiced in any way, so either part invoice or fully invoiced, uh, any lines of that status will be amendable. Let's look at the sales order that I've got here. So from the sales order list, I can select it and go to amend, or from the menu, you could go to sales order processing, sales orders, and amend order, and find it from there. So if I go to amend order, okay, the alert, if I just show quantities here, you can see that this particular line has a quantity of two, it's being allocated, but at the moment there's no dispatch and therefore there's no invoice. So for this type of line, I can select the line, choose edit item, I can simply then change the VAT code on the line. Click save and click save. OK, so that's a simple outstanding sales order line. Next scenario that I've got is an order where there has been a part dispatch and that dispatch has also been invoiced. So if I click amend and then again on the lines show quantities. So here you can see it's an order for a quantity of two, only one of which has been allocated. That one item then has been uh, dispatched and also invoiced. So I do have an outstanding quantity of one. So if I click the line and choose edit item, this time you'll see that it's actually greyed out. So what you'd need to do in this scenario is change the quantity of the line, click save, and then choose add items and simply add the details back in for the outstanding quantity choosing the correct VAT code, of course. Obviously, if you've already gone through and updated your stock items, this will come through correctly. So we'll click Save and OK. The other scenario, if I click Amend on my third order here, okay, so this particular order, it has been fully allocated and dispatched fully, but as there is no invoiced amount, you'll see I can simply go into the line and I can still amend the VAT code for this line because there's been no invoice against it. So that is really the key to your sales orders and also your purchase orders, is it whether or not there's been any invoiced amount assigned to a line. So you may well have a mixture of orders as well, where some lines are invoiced, some lines aren't. Um, and really, you're going to have to go through and review those. But again, find out your tax point to identify the orders which could be impacted, and then you'd need to go through those. Purchase orders are very similar, and it really comes down to whether an order line has been invoiced or part invoiced. So again, if there's no element of invoicing, you can select the order and choose amend. Um, if there is any sort of invoicing against the line, so if it's been part invoiced, You'd need to edit the quantity of the existing line 
and then add a new line for the same item with the new VAT code for the outstanding quantity. Purchase orders are slightly different, however, as when you go in to record an invoice, when you click post, it's actually at this point that it's the key as to the VAT code that's, that's chosen. So it really comes down to whether you want to completely match the invoice against the purchase order values and it to be exactly the same as to whether you do need to amend the purchase order. If you are happy to record um, the invoice with, with slightly different values, then you can do so. There's no problem with that. And you simply just change the VAT code within this screen here. So that covers everything you will need to review in Sage 200 if the new VAT changes introduced impact your business. Now, there is an article on our website, which also includes some useful links to other articles on the gov.co.uk site, particularly useful if you've got some specific legislative queries. Don't forget to like this video and, of course, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Uh, but for now, thank you very much for watching.